Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here, back with another Sublime Text tutorial video. Now when we install Sublime Text, a lot of the core functionality of Sublime comes from packages that come pre-installed with it. And of course we can also use package control to install other packages to augment that functionality as we see fit. Now if you've used Sublime for an appreciable length of time, you've probably run into at least one situation where one of the packages you're using, either when you've installed or when that shipped with Sublime, doesn't quite do what you want and it's costing you time and you wish you could modify that thing a little bit. Now, packages are just collections of files, so it stands to reason that perhaps with the guidance of someone that could give you the insight into what needs to be changed and where that change could be made, you could modify the package to do what it is that you want. But how do you actually do something like that? <laughs> For our purposes here, we're going to gloss over how you might determine what package needs to be modified or what file needs to be modified in that package or what the modification actually needs to be. That's not something we can discuss in a generic sense because it's going to be different for anybody that needs to make any sort of change. We'll presume that some kind soul somewhere on the forum or Stack Overflow can give you insight into what potentially might need to be changed if you don't know how to do that yourself. Let's instead focus on how we might actually create such a change. Now, as I said, packages are just a collection of files. So stands to reason, find the source of files, modify the file, at its source that you need to modify and your change will be seen by Sublime. This will 100% work and you should 100% never ever modify a package file that you yourself did not create and put in place. And the reason for that is that the packages that ship with Sublime can be replaced wholesale by Sublime when it's upgraded or when you reinstall it. And for packages that are installed by package control, package control upgrades packages by throwing away the old version and putting it a new one in its place. So if you were to modify a package by modifying it directly and you're not the one who installed it manually yourself, not using package control or anything else, then at some point in the future, something will take your package and throw it away and replace it with something else. Your changes will be lost. The best case scenario in that situation is you're confused briefly and then you realize what happened and you put everything back to the way it was, albeit at a waste of a little bit of your time in solving the problem. And the worst case scenario is you forget what change you actually made or where or how you did it and you've lost that change forever. The appropriate change in this situation is to create a package override. Now, it's important to note here that package overrides will only work for packages that are installed as Sublime package files, and this is the reason why all of the packages that ship with Sublime are shipped as Sublime package files, and 99% of all packages that package control installs are also installed as Sublime package files, so that we can create overrides in a safe way, because otherwise, the only choice we would have would be to modify a package at its source, and those changes will be lost. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about a Sublime package file or the packages folder, there is a video linked down in the description that goes into some more detail on the various ways that packages can be installed and the locations that they can be installed in. You can bring yourself up to speed in that regard. When Sublime loads packages, no matter what format they're in or no matter where they are, it does so by finding the list of all of the package resources inside of that package and loading them one by one. And when it comes to loading a file from a Sublime package file, there's an extra step in there between the point where Sublime finds the resource and Sublime loads the resource, it looks inside of the packages folder where unpacked package files are kept to see is there a folder there with the same name as the package I'm loading? And if there is, is there a file inside of that folder that has the exact name as the file I'm about to load? And if the answer to both of those questions is yes, then Sublime will throw away and ignore the version of the file from inside of the Sublime package file and it will instead load the file from the packages folder instead. This allows us to make a change safely because the contents of the actual packages folder itself is never touched by package control or by sublime text except in the case where a package is installed by package control as an unpacked package. This is a very rare occurrence. If something like that happens you don't really have a lot of recourse in modifying a package other than trying to install it manually and not using package control or talking to the package author and getting them to make the modification for you so that you don't have to.
Now, the good thing about this is that means your change is safe. The bad news to that is that if this file is used forever in perpetuity, even if the package is upgraded and the file that you're overriding has been modified by the author of the package in some fashion. Sublime will continue to use your override, which could leave you missing out on bug fixes or features or other things. However, there's totally a way around that. And if you follow along to the end of the video, and not skip away, I will show you how you can solve that particular problem and get informed about when there's going to be a problem that's happening. Well, let's go ahead and just do a very quick example of something like this. The arithmetic command, which is something we've covered in a previous video, is stored in a plugin in the default package. And I could use view package file to load that file, and it's the arithmetic.py file. Now, this file, if I jump to line one up here, is coming from a sublime package file, so I can't modify this file at all, even if I want to. So if I wanted to make a modification to this, say to add an extra variable of some sort or add an an extra function or a new library other than the math library, which we can see is happening on line 15 here, I'd have to create an override for this. And if I wanted to do such a thing manually, it would go a little something like this. First, I need to use browse packages to open the packages folder. This is also available from the preferences menu. Look here to see the file we want to override is from the default package. Is there a folder here by that name? No, there's not. So we need to create a new folder in this location and give it the name of the package, the exact name of the package case has to match. Hit enter, this folder now exists. Now we come back over here to Sublime and save the file. Now the file is saved. If we came back here and looked inside, we can see there's a file inside of this package's default folder named arithmetic.py. Now because the file package's default arithmetic.py exists here on disk, and it also exists in the Sublime package file. When Sublime loads the default package, it will always load this version of the plugin instead of the one that it was originally shipped with. So we can go ahead and make any modifications to this file that we want. However, this file was opened from a Sublime package file, so we can't modify it. So we need to close it and reopen it to clear the read-only state in the buffer. And then we can go ahead and make our changes. And at any point, if we didn't want this override to exist any longer, then all we have to do is come back over to here and find the arithmetic file and delete it from here. The file no longer exists here on disk. We can see that being reflected here. I'm going to go ahead and close that tab. Now our override is gone. Now one thing to note here is that when you remove an override in this regard for some things such as plugins, you might need to quit and reinstall or sorry, quit and restart Sublime. Don't reinstall it. Just restart it in order to get it to reload that because it'll unload the plugin when you delete it, but it won't know that it needs to reload it. Uh, when it is an override. Now, this definitely works. And if you're only creating a couple of overrides, it's a pretty easy thing to do, albeit kind of a pain in the butt because you have to close and reopen the file. You have to go and find that folder and create it. And I'm going to come back over to here and go back up one directory level and delete the folder that we just created as well. So now we're back to where we started. Now, this is a little bit of self-promotion because I'm the author of this package, but there is a package called Override Audit. There's also a video on the channel that will give you more information on said package, but it makes creating an override ridiculously easy. Now, one thing we can do is choose this Override Audit Create Override command here from the command palette. Sublime's going to show us a list of all of the packages and we can say the default package is where we want to create an override and then we can say the arithmetic file is where we want to create the override now it's opened the file for us now nothing will happen until you save this file so you can close this buffer and no override will be created however we can type in this file if we want to because we have created an override using this command and when I save the file that's it, the override has been created. If we jump back here, we can see there is a default folder created and there's an arithmetic.py file that's located inside of here. So override audit has done the heavy lifting of creating uh, that file for us. I'm gonna come back to here and close this buffer again. Now, uh, another way that we could do the same thing from override audit uh, would be to use the view package file command because often when you're trying to figure out what file it is you need to override, you might be doing something like 
this because it's easy to find the uh, appropriate file. If you knew the file was named arithmetic and you didn't know what package it was in, this would be an easy way to find it. And again, we're using a few package file here. So if we were to modify this file or attempt to modify this file, I'm going to jump up to line one here. When I type nothing happens here in this file, but if we were to check the uh, context menu, there's a command here labeled override this resource. And that is all you need to do. And now we can modify this buffer and do exactly the same thing as we did before. Now, the nice thing about using override audit to do this, to create the override, aside from the fact that it makes it ridiculously easy to do, is that one of the features of override audit, the main reason I created it in the first place, is that it has the ability to check for you to see has the file that you're overriding been modified by the person who created the package. And in, in such a case, it will warn you and show you that this file was modified by you. It was also modified by the author of the package. Maybe the change is safe. Maybe it's not. You might want to check and look and see, do you need to roll new changes in? Perhaps you were patching out a bug that's being fixed upstream because otherwise your override will be used forever. An override audit is a great way to be warned when that's happening so that you can make sure that you keep your copy of Sublime running in tip top shape. As we can see, creating an override in Sublime is actually really easy. It's ridiculously easy if you're using the override audit package. And if you just want to do it manually for the old ad hoc uh, override that you need to create, you can also do it easily manually in a pinch as well. And that browse packages uh, menu item and command palette entry will work across any copy of Sublime Text, no matter where or how you've installed it or whatever version of the operating system that you have it installed on. But if you use Override Audit to create this, then you also get that added functionality on warning you when the underlying file has been uh, modified so that you know that your override might not be safe. And that's all we have for this video. I hope you found this useful and informative. And if you have, please use those buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share. And that that way you will not miss the next tutorial when it drops. And until that next tutorial, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.